Hi there, welcome back to A Slice of Physics. A few videos ago, we discussed free fall, which was the result of the acceleration due to gravity that we are all subject to near the surface of the Earth. And in the previous video, I introduced tilted axes. We're going to put these two concepts together to see what the components of acceleration due to gravity are along a ramp or a slide. The specific example we'll take is a child accelerating down a backyard slide. So here's our backyard slide that's tilted at some angle with respect to the horizontal. And let's say that angle is 20 degrees in this case. And we'll call it theta as usual. And here's the child who is sliding down this ramp. So the velocity vectors increase as the child moves down because of the acceleration due to gravity. And we also discussed previously that the acceleration due to gravity g is 9.80 meters per second squared pointing down. So now we want to figure out what the component of that acceleration is that this child is subject to as he or she slides down the ramp. Now the first question we got to address is what do we mean by down? When we have a tilted ramp like this, is the acceleration due to gravity pointing down like this? Or is it down into the ramp like that from the child's perspective? So is it perpendicular to the ramp or is it straight down as a vertical line? Well, let me give you a picture of the Earth here to discuss this. When we say down, what do we actually mean? Well, I'm sitting here and gravity is trying to pull me to the center of mass of the Earth, which is somewhere here. So that's down. The person in China who might be sitting over here, they would say for them down is here because they're standing on the Earth like this. And the sky for them is here, that's up, and this is down. And for us, this is down, and our sky is up here, so this is up. So what we really mean when we say down is that it means it's towards the center of the earth. So back to this, if I'm not sitting on a flat ground, but I'm sitting on a ramp, and I'm going to show a gigantic ramp with respect to the scale of the earth uh, that we have here, and I'm sitting on it over here, which way does the acceleration due to gravity point? Well, if it always points down, and if down is always towards the center of the Earth, it's going to be pointing that way, vertically down, not perpendicular to the surface or into the surface. So in this case, this notion is incorrect. It's not directly into the surface, but it's always vertically down. So this gravity that we had here is correct. Now because the ramp is supporting the child, the child's not going to fall directly through it, but rather going to slide along it. And we are interested in finding out the component of that acceleration along the ramp. Okay, so to discuss this, I've cleaned up the earth example over here and blown up the ramp to be a bigger picture so we can work with some geometry. So here's a child represented as a particle, and here's the acceleration due to gravity g, which is 9.80 meters per second squared, and now we know that down is straight down. The child is sliding down the ramp, and to discuss that in the most convenient way, we set up our x-axis down the ramp like that, and y-axis perpendicular to it. Remember, x and y always had to be perpendicular. Well, this is very helpful because by doing this, I have turned the motion of this child into a one-dimensional motion, because we know the child is not sinking into the ramp or shooting out of the ramp. They're just merely sliding down it. By adopting this axis, I make my analysis of this motion a lot simpler because it's reduced to a one-dimensional motion. If I had chosen my traditional axes of x like this and y like this, the child is now moving and accelerating along both the x axis as well as the y-axis, and that turns out to be more complex to analyze. So now if the motion is along the x-direction and, the, and there is acceleration along the x-direction, what is it? So given our previous discussion on tilted axes, I can show that to get the components of this g along x and y-axis, I got to draw a perpendicular line from this tip to the x-axis, which is along the ramp. So it has to look something like this, such that this is 90 degrees. And if I did that, this here would be my gx, the component of acceleration along the x-axis. And if I did that same thing from here 
to the y-axis, which let me show that over here, that would be like this, perpendicular to the x-axis. And then by going from the tip to the y-axis in a perpendicular fashion, I get my gy. Now the y component doesn't do anything. The child is supported by the ramp, so they won't accelerate into it. They would simply respond to the acceleration along the ramp and slide down it. So we're interested in figuring out what this gx is, but just for completion, we'll also figure out gy in terms of g and something else. That something else in this case is going to be this angle. And let's see how that works. Well, we got two right angle triangles here. Here's one right angle triangle. I'll outline it in red. And here's the other right angle triangle. I'll outline it in green. The diagonal of both of these is g, which I know the value of. It's 9.80 meters per second squared. By the way, this here is gx and so is this. The opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. This here is gy and so is this. This slanted one here is gy. The vertical in this case is the diagonal for both of these right triangles. So knowing the diagonal to get the sides, if I know one of the angles in this triangle other than the 90 degree, I can do it. So let's see if I can determine one of the angles in this triangle by knowing this angle to be 20 degrees. So I've completed this big right angle triangle over here, and this is 90 degrees. And if this is theta, I'm going to use brown to show 90 minus theta. I don't have room to write it. So that here is 90 minus theta because the sum of three sides of a triangle add up to 180. This is 90 by itself, so these two add up to 90. And then if I go to the small triangle over here, I've got 90 minus theta over here. These two angles add up to 90, which means this angle here must be theta. And theta I'm going to use gray for. Because things have gotten a bit crowded here, I've reproduced this triangle over here and enlarged it. So G now the vertical is over here. GY is over here pointing diagonally down. GX is over here pointing diagonally down to the right. And this angle is what we determined to be theta, which is 20 degrees. So now it becomes fairly easy to get GX and GY in terms of G and theta using our Sokotoas. So for GX, it happens to be opposite the angle theta. I know the hypotenuse G, so the function I need to use is sine. And so I get sine of 20 degrees equals the opposite, which in this case is GX, divided by hypotenuse, which is G, which I can write as 9.80. And by simplifying, I will get GX is 9.80 times sine of 20 degrees, which your calculator will tell you is 3.35 meters per second squared down to three significant digits that we had going into it. Now we got to look at the picture for our signs and GX points down the ramp, positive X axis points down the ramp, so this is a positive value. And then for GY, it's the adjacent to the angle theta. I need adjacent, I know hypotenuse, the function I need is cosine. So cosine of 20 degrees equals GY divided by 9.80. And when you simplify and solve for gy, you will get 9.21 meters per second squared. And looking at our picture over here, gy points down into the ramp. Positive y-axis points up away from the ramp. So this is a negative value. So as our child accelerates down the ramp, they don't feel the full force of g. They only feel gx, which is only 3.35 meters per second, a lot less than 9.80 which is why kids enjoy slides, but they don't enjoy falling down from the top of the slide. In this slice of physics, we learned how to determine the components of acceleration due to gravity along a set of rotated coordinate axes, and that gets us ready to solve problems on ramps and slides as we are going to see in the next video.